And while this is a good day for many, let us not forget that we lost one of our own. Detective Colin Zabel was an exemplary detective, a son, a friend, a protector. Hey guys, Pete here. This will be my Mayor of Easttown Episode 6 Breakdown. Only one more episode after this, and we got some answers. Mayor's recovering but reeling over Colin's untimely death, and Richard shows that he's paying attention by bringing the right hoagies that she told him about in her recommendations when they first met. Real quick, this video will contain spoilers if you haven't watched the episode yet, so this is your warning and your last chance to leave. With that out of the way, let's get started. The episode was jam-packed. A lot happened. It ended in a cliffhanger, but we do tie up a lot of the side stories, or at least what felt like conclusions for those. And then we got what is supposed to be answers to the big mysteries, but because this is the second to last episode, feel like there's probably more that we haven't seen. There's probably a twist or two that still isn't clear. And it makes you wonder if what we learned, that Billy is the killer and the father, is actually true or not. Let's look at the things they did wrap up. As far as Deacon Mark's concerned, he gets called in after Father Dan goes and talks to the police. He tells them the exact same story he told Father Dan, and it seems to me that this is the end of Deacon Mark's involvement. It seems like he's telling the truth, and it would feel kind of out of place next week if we found out there was more going on with him. He was arrested for throwing the bike in the river, but I don't think there's any further revelations coming in his story. On a slightly happier note, we did see Dawn and Katie reunited. She was able to bring her home. She's with her daughter Kenzie again. And though Dawn does explain that she's having a hard time adjusting, which of course she would, we do see that Dawn's grateful to have her back. She apologizes to Mare. And all of this did seem like the conclusion to that part of the story as well. At this point, I don't think there's anything else going on with the kidnapping in relation to what happened to Aaron. In a much sadder note, we saw Freddy's story come to an end as well. Eagle-eyed fans who really looked closely at the trailers had already put together that Mare was going to find those clothes in Freddy's house. And unfortunately, she was responding to a call from Beth, who was worried about her brother because she couldn't get into his house. And Mare discovered his body after his OD, which was really sad to see. When they go to see Kenny at the jail, there's an explanation for how he got the clothing. I guess it makes sense. It sets things in motion for Mare to start looking in, digging into what happened at that reunion, and things fall into place from there. I don't know if we should call it a conclusion to Siobhan's story, but we did get a better idea of the tension that exists between her and her mother. Through Mare's ongoing therapy, we find out exactly what happened on the day Kevin died. A neighbor called her because they saw Kevin going into the house. She assumed that this was for drug money because that's why he always came and she was away, so she asked Siobhan, who was close by, to go over to the house and talk to him. That meant that she was the one who was there to find Kevin hanging in the attic. This was obviously very traumatic for her, and she couldn't even speak when she called Mare on the phone. Mare rushed home, had to cut him down. She says she held him and stayed with the body until the paramedics wrestled it away. It's pretty heavy. I gotta mention it, but this is one of those highlight performance moments. Kate Winslet really delivered everything in this scene. Her facial expressions in the delivery work in a way that we're seeing how she's processing what she's saying and she's touching something inside that she stayed away from. It's set up really well with Colin's death opening the door, her visiting his mother and getting slapped and that taking her one step closer, and then we see things come to a head when Siobhan comes home wasted later in the episode. I haven't been the biggest fan of the Siobhan storylines thus far, I'm not sure how far this goes beyond a moment for Mayer to understand how not dealing with Kevin's death has affected everyone around her. But again, the performance here made the payoff work, and we do see Mayer willing to apologize as she's hugging her crying daughter. If those were the most dramatic scenes, the most intense had to be Jess's encounter with Dylan in the bathtub scene at Carrie's. After Brianna called the cops and told them that Dylan wasn't in bed on the night of Aaron's murder, they interviewed him again at the station. During that, he found out that he was back at the top of the suspect list, and Mayor kind of bluffed him about the journals. So after he lawyered up and got out of there, he wanted to talk to Jess about what she told the police. 
as far as I can tell, she hadn't told him anything at this point, and she just doesn't want to be around him. But he still wants to talk to her, and when she won't get in the car and runs away, they chase after her. It almost looks like she's going to get away when she finds a hiding place, but he does find her, and then he threatens her with a gun. I'll come back to that because we saw a couple of guns in this episode and neither one of them is a match for the bullet that was found in the tree at Brandywine Park. He does point the gun at her and tells her not to open her mouth again or she's going to end up getting shot in the face just like Aaron. It's intense, but it's also annoyingly vague as far as what he wants her to keep secret. Overall, this scene mostly just accomplishes showing us that Dylan is actually worse than we thought, which is saying something. Adding to the intensity is the bathtub scene. We had seen Carrie at work earlier in the episode and found out that she was working crazy hours. And also, it looks like she's staying clean as she turns down her co-worker's offer of a pick-me-up. Mare drops Drew off at her place. They seem to be getting closer, getting along really well. As Mare told Frank, he didn't even turn around to say goodbye. He was happy to be there. As she's giving him a bath, it looks like she's getting tired. And eventually she falls asleep briefly. When she wakes up, we see him with his head under the water. And we're just as relieved as her when we see that he's alright. He was just playing. He just had his head under the water. He's definitely not drowned in the tub. Right now, I'm reading Carrie's part of the story as being exactly as it seems. She seems to be working hard. She's in recovery, which is a whole different challenge on top of that. And we see that she's learning how difficult it's going to be to keep doing everything she has to do and having full custody of Drew at the same time. To me, it looks like with Mare making progress and Carrie doing what she has to do, we're probably going to see them come to some sort of compromise where they both keep an active role in raising him. Who knows, now that Faye's gone, maybe she'll move in with Frank and that'll make things easier. Either way, it seems like it's going in a non-tragic direction, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. The big reveal in the episode is that we hear Billy, with his own mouth to be sure, say that he killed Aaron. By the time we get there, it's heavily implied that he's DJ's father. He would have a motive there, especially if she was threatening to reveal that secret. But boy does it feel a little hard to believe based on how things played out. The first big red flag is his reaction to John coming to live at their father's house. He says your life's a mess because you couldn't keep your dick in your pants. Now you clean it up. This doesn't seem like the same person that we later see breaking down over his guilt about being a killer. Also, after their dad tells John that he saw Billy come in covered with blood on the night Aaron died, everything John does after that kind of feels like he's trying to manipulate things and take advantage of the situation. When the confession comes, we don't hear the whole conversation. And depending on how you interpret it, it at least seems possible that John is orchestrating the whole thing. Coming into this episode, Billy was losing steam as my early favorite suspect. I was moving towards looking way more at John alone, or maybe John is the killer and Billy as the father. I'm coming out of the episode thinking I might have had it flipped, but still stuck on John and a situation where nothing that's happened with Billy really makes sense. One thing I feel certain about is that John is the one who comes off as sleazy. He's the one that has a history of lying and cheating on his wife, and he just comes off as being more capable of doing these diabolical things. Independently, Mare's work in the case, and she's coming to the conclusion that Billy's the father and the killer. She tracks down the jewelry store where the locket came from and finds out that Billy bought it. When I first watched this scene, I only saw the name Ross on the receipt and thought that this might be a big clue that it could be either one of them. But when you look closely, you see that on the bottom sheet of paper, it actually does say Billy Ross. Mayor gets to that conclusion. She calls it into the chief. He tells her to stop, wait for backup, and she does the exact opposite. She actually speeds up after she talks to him on the phone. She found out from Lori where they were at, so she's on her way to where they're fishing. And like I said, none of it exactly adds up. John goes to Lori and he tells her the story that Billy's the father, Billy's the killer, and that, hey, don't go tell Mare about this. How would he ever feel confident in his situation at this moment and expecting his wife, who he's on the outs with, to keep this a secret from her best friend? It doesn't add up. 
it feels possible that he might have went and told her that because he knows she'll tell Mare. Plus, when he goes to talk to Billy, Billy says he's ready to confess. But instead of just going and doing that, John says, why don't we go fishing first? When they go out to the truck, Billy finds out that there's a gun in the tackle box. The way I interpret this is that Billy did not bring the gun. Instead, he discovered that John was bringing one, and this has him worried about why that would happen. When they get out, John asks him for the tackle box, and he says, no, I got it, and he keeps it with him. After seeing that, it looks like John wasn't confident that Billy could hold up the story or that after he confessed, something else was going to come out that John doesn't want to get out. I could be wrong here. It's definitely possible. But to me, at this point, it looks like John set everything up so that he could get Billy alone at the river and kill him. Mare is arriving there thinking that Billy's the killer, and that might be setting up a situation that John can use to his advantage anyway. Although if Billy makes it out of there alive, whatever he was worried about, whatever he was worried about getting out, or whatever made him want to bring the gun in the first place, probably will come to light. The final bit here is that while she's on route, Jess does come in, she doesn't listen to Dylan, she goes and talks to the police again, and she gives the chief this photograph, which we don't get to see. As soon as he sees that, he says to get Mare on the phone. And you have to remember that Mare told him that Billy did it, which makes this feel like the photograph doesn't back that up. It's a setup. I'm not sure what to think. They put a lot of effort into making us question what we know and what that'll mean for the ending. And I guess that'll be fine if they deliver a memorable finale. What's really going on with Dylan is a mystery. It seems less likely that he was just trying to burn the journals to keep the real father a secret because he wanted to keep DJ. But it's not any clearer as to why Jess was working with him and what happened to make her change her mind. The photo that she kept and the chief's reaction to it make it seem like that'll be key to solving the case, but we're going to have to wait until next episode to see what it actually is. Finding out the bullet in the tree came from an old police revolver is a weird twist. None of the guns we've seen in the show are a match for that. We've seen Dylan's, Kenny's, Dawn's, and the one in the tackle box, and none of them are revolvers, which means that detail might just be there for that purpose. It's hard to say. There is a shot of a gun in the trailer, and it looks like you can figure out whose that is, so I'll get into that in my next video, because at this point, I don't even know what it means. In the end, we learn more about Mare, we see what she's working through, why that's been difficult, and we see her working on the case, that process putting all the attention on the two Ross brothers, setting up a situation where she's going to be there by herself, confronting them at the river. As it stands, everything is still pointing to John as pulling the strings, but I can't explain why Billy is confessing or what Dylan is up to with Jess. That could be just local, unrelated crime stuff, but it seems a little surprising that Jess would be involved in that. Obviously, Billy has something going on beyond heavy drinking. He was covered in blood after all, and he looked like he had his faculties about him enough to try to hide it from his dad. It doesn't look like he was uninvolved, but is there a possibility that he doesn't know what happened? I mean, none of the explanations I come up with seem very solid at this point. Also, I don't know how this comes back to Mare and her personal journey. It's not like she overlooked these characters as suspects, since there was no evidence connecting them up until this point. I mean, it could just be that this was her friend's family and that this was going on and nobody noticed it, but I still think there has to be more under the surface. There's still a lot of little things that feel like loose ends, which there will be some, but there's still an hour to go, with Mare already there, ready to have a confrontation with the two main suspects. I've never been keen on the Ryan shot Aaron, or Lori, or Siobhan shot her, but there is room to tie them into the larger picture. If one of the Ross brothers is DJ's father, then there's at least the possibility of more abuse inside the family. Maybe they'll go down that road. Maybe it'll be about family secrets in a town where everybody knows everybody, but they don't know the whole story. I don't know. I'll have to give it some thought. So I'll leave it there for now, and in a couple of days I'll come back, I'll break down the trailer, and I'll tell you what theories I have at that point. I'll give it a rewatch, I'll see what other people are saying about it, and see what I can come up with. So let me know in the comments what you think, how you think things are going to end, and the biggest questions you have going into the series finale.
Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.